In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to solve complex radical equations that contain square roots, like this one. We have a square root within the square root. Feel free to pause the video if you want to try this problem. What I recommend doing in the first step is taking the square of both sides. This will get rid of the outer square root function. So on the left, we're just going to have x plus the square root of 8x. And on the right, 4 squared, which is 4 times 4, so that's 16. Now, I'm going to subtract both sides by x. I want to get the square root of 8x by itself on one side of the equation. So right now, it's only on the left side. On the right side, I have 16 minus x. So now I'm going to square both sides again. On the left, I'm just going to get 8x. On the right, I have 16 minus x written twice if we expand it. So now I'm going to FOIL. 16 times 16 is 256. This will give me negative 16x. And here we'll get another negative 16x. Negative x times negative x is positive x squared. Combine the like terms, we have negative 16x minus 16x. That's going to be negative 32x. And then I'm going to subtract both sides by 8x. So I have 256, negative 32 minus 8 is negative 40. So I have this set at the moment. So I'm going to rewrite that in standard form. So that's 0 is equal to x squared minus 40x plus 256. Now let's see if we can factor this expression. What two numbers multiply to 256 but add to the middle coefficient, negative 40. 256 is divisible by 2. If we divide it by 2, we get 128. 256 is not divisible by 3, but it is divisible by 4. If we divide it by 4, we get 64. If we divide it by 8, we get 32. 8 plus 32 is positive 40, so if we were to use negative 8 and negative 32, it will give us negative 40. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace negative 40x with negative 32x and negative 8x. And then I'm going to factor by grouping. So in the first two terms, I'm going to take out x. I'm going to be left with x minus 32. And for the last two terms, I'm going to take out a negative 8. And I'll be left with x and then 256 divided by negative 8. That's going to give us negative 32. And then I'm going to factor this common term, x minus 32. When I take it out of this term, I'm left with an x. When I take it out of this term, I'm left with negative 8. So this is how we could factor it. Now, using a zero product property, we could set each of these factors equal to zero. Add in 32 to both sides, we get that x is equal to positive 32. Add in 8 to both sides, we get that x is equal to 8. So now, let's go back to our original equation which was the square root of x plus the square root of 8x is equal to 4. So we have two possible solutions. We need to check for extraneous solutions. So let's start with 32. Let's replace x with 32 and let's see what we get. Now, 8 times 32 is 256. 
and the square root of 256 is 16. 32 plus 16 is 48. And the square root of 48 is not equal to 4. As a decimal, the square root of 48 is 6.928. So this is an extraneous solution. Now let's check the other one. So we have 8 plus the square root of 8 times 8, which equals 4. 8 times 8 is 64. And the square root of 64 is 8. 8 plus 8 is 16. And the square root of 16 is 4. So this works, which means x equals 8. That's going to be our answer. For those of you who want to quickly access my math and science video playlist, feel free to check out the website video-tutor.net. You'll find playlists on algebra, geometry, trig, pre-cal, calculus, general chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, statistics, and other topics as well. And you can also access my final exam review videos on this website, in addition to my test prep videos. And there's some other links that you can explore here as well. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. Now, let's work on another example. Somewhat similar, but slightly different. If you want to pause the video and try this example, feel free to do so at this time. So the first step is going to be the same. We're going to try to get rid of the outer radical on the left. And we could do so by taking the square of both sides. The square root and the square will cancel. On the left, we're just going to have x plus the square root of 12x. And that's going to equal 3x. Now what we can do at this point is we could subtract both sides by x. So what we're going to have now is the square root of 12x is equal to 3 minus 1x, or 3x minus 1x, which is 2x. And now we need to take the square of both sides again. So these two will cancel, and we'll be left with 12x on the left, 2x squared, or 2x times 2x, that's going to be 4x squared. Now, I don't recommend dividing both sides by 4x because you'll lose the solution if you do that. Instead, what you want to do is subtract both sides by 12x. So on the left, we'll have 0. On the right, we'll have 4x squared minus 12x. Now, what we want to do is we want to factor. We want to take out the GCF, which is going to be 4x. 4x squared divided by 4x is x negative 12x divided by 4x is negative 3. Now, using the zero product property, we could set each of these equal to zero, and we could solve for x. So dividing both sides by 4, we could see that x is equal to zero. Here, if we add 3 to both sides, we get that x is equal to 3. So these are the two possible solutions. And now let's rewrite the original equation. So it's the square root of x plus the square root of 12x is equal to the square root of 3x. So let's start with 0. Let's see if that works. So this is 0. 12 times 0 is 0. 3 times 0 is 0. The square root of 0 is 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. And this is going to work. Now let's try 3. So replace an x with 3, this is what we have. 12 times 3 is 36. 3 times 3 is 9. 
the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 plus 6 is 9. And the square root of 9 on the left is also equal to 3. So this works as well. In this example, both solutions are correct. So that's all you need to do in order to solve complex radical equations with internal square roots. The first thing you want to do to solve these equations is you want to take the square of both sides before you begin. Now for those of you who want access to more related topics, feel free to come below the video and check out the links in the description. If you click on more, you'll see other videos on solving radical equations and even graph and radical equations and other content as well. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance.